And this in, in C or C++, this would be in main, right? The sort of function you call that contains your whole program and calls to other functions. Um, so you have USB on refresh, which just for some reason you have to call that every now and then to appease the USB wards of time and space. Um, keeps it as a USB device, keeps it like happy. So just throw that in there every maybe 10, 50 lines. Um, this is an analog read of pin 4 and 5. So 4 is connected to the resistor, 5 is connected to an LED. Um, this is USB.set. This is really important for today, particularly. Um, USB.set lets you uh, set up like a channel for the information to go across. And so we talked about it having four two, uh, two digit hexadecimal numbers, right? So here we're doing, we're setting it on channel one, or channel zero, one and zero. We have channel zero, three, three, so four of them. Um, the number, that's just going to be whatever LDR is. On the second channel, um, you have the LED bell. And then, so here, just for the LED output, we saw this last week, we have map. Map just scales numbers back and forth, right? So like, if I had a number between 1 and 100, and I wanted that to represent how bright my LED is going to be, um, but I, we know that LEDs have like an 8-bit PWM, right? Or this has an 8-bit PWM. If we're using an 8-bit PWM, it goes from 0 to 255. So I would just do map. Uh, LDR, like brightness or whatever I wanted to convert. 0, 100, 0, 255. In this case, we're converting a 10 bit number into an 8 bit number. We're not really converting it, we're scaling it to a range. So it's kind of like this is some percent of uh, 1023, and so it's some other percent out of 0 to 255. Right, got that? That makes sense. And then analog bright just writes stuff out to the pins. It's PWM, actually, but that's sort of obscured away by being like this analog bright. You know, it's kind of cheesy. Kind of odd, because you're not actually writing out an analog value like 3 or like 2. You're actually setting out uh, like PWM that approximates that voltage. So it's kind of a lie, but that's what we have for you. Um, so this is actually running right now on this chip, and so we'll check out the cool thing that we're going to do today, it's which is we are going to look, we're going to be able to know what value the chip is reading in from these sensors. And this is useful for all sorts of things, like mainly debugging, right? Because you have this thing and stuff is happening and maybe it's not working how you want it to work. Um, but it's super helpful to be able to see what the chip is actually reading in. And so everyone has that folder called stream.py, right? Or stream or Python or whatever. Um, inside of it, there's a file called stream.py. Everyone has Python installed because you all go to the work. So I don't have to worry about that, which is nice. Do you guys all know how to use it? No? A little bit? Um, so you guys can either open a vital, which, you know, I shudder a little bit saying that. But you guys could open a vital, which is the IDE that's packaged with Python that you guys have, and um, run it from there, or you can open up the command line if you're in Windows, and just go to whatever directory uh, stream.py is in, and just type in python space stream.py, and that's how you do it in Linux as well. In Linux you want to say sudo stream.py because it uses the USB uh, stuff, and you need to have super user access to do that. So you can see um, inside USB simple. Oh, oops. Uh, 
So I have mine in a folder, in a folder called PyStream. So if you look inside it, you have stream.py and USB. And so we just sudo stream. sudo Python stream. And all of a sudden, values. So I'm going to like put my hand over it, and you can see the values change. <coughs> So now we're actually getting some kind of like reading out of this. And it's just sort of streaming whatever the chip sends in. It's actually making so the script actually tells your computer to request it from the chip, and then the chip will reply. Um, and so it's like my hand is over it, my hand's not over it. So you can see like the first value, which is the LDR drops a lot. I put my hand over it goes up. Super good for debugging. And so we'll play with this today, we'll play with sensors today. Um, anyone having trouble doing this? Yes. I got the command window. Okay. And you're in win windows? windows. Yeah. So type in dir, and I should tell you what directory you're in, maybe? Or dir like dir. D-I-R, like directory. Does that tell you what's in your directory, or does that tell you? It's a built-in function directory. Oh, it tells me what's in the directory. Uh, in Windows, the, the way you switch between directories is CD. It doesn't like CD. Oh, what is it? It is CD. It is CD. I'm pretty sure it's CD because I know. Is it try try CD? It doesn't like it does. Yeah. Okay. So it is CD. And PyStream. Oh. And the PyStream folder now. So now just type in Python um, stream dot py. It doesn't seem. What what error do you get? Python is not recognized as an internal or external. Okay, so if you're getting a device not found, that's because it's actually running, and it's catching the error that the device is in fact not there. So if you don't have this plugged in, it will say device not found. Um, so that's working. Try just typing in stream.py. I don't know. When I, I typed in stream.py and it's asking what program I want to open it with. Uh, Mine just can't find the folder. Can't find the folder? Yeah. Yes. I was in your last week. We use the light. Yes. I'll see if I have them in here. If not, um, just like peek over it in your shoulder or share someone. Um, I'll give them to you when we get these sort of issues. Uh, is yours, did, is, was your install done by IT? Or Windows? Yeah. Did you IT doesn't put Python on the path, though. So you have to add Python to the path. Uh, uh, Wait. Ew. Yeah. I just run stream.py. So basic, so. I just type it in. Um, That's how I've been. See, so yeah, I can, like, type in Python oh. stream.py. Oh. Yeah. That's because. Yeah, when I type that into the command line, there's like a certain, they're like, it knows certain commands, right? And the way it knows that is it, it searches through all these paths and sees if there's like a program on there. Just like in MATLAB, you have to change the paths sometimes to like whatever directory you're currently working in or add that. You have to do something similar for the command line. And so with Windows, it's really bad, especially Windows 7. It's really pain in the butt to add stuff to the path. So, See if you have idle installed. Just go to the start menu and type in idle. And if that comes up, we'll show you guys how to do that. Yes? Yeah. Ah, yes. With Windows, you may have to do that. No, because you only have one. But some people do have two. We'll just use right. idle. It's install, not ideal. We would only need one. Yeah, but sometimes the path would be like Python 2.0. Yeah. 
because it like the teams are different things. What? Um, Right. Yes, in case Avery has to speak. Sorry? In case Avery has to speak, because you're like, oh, in him. Okay, so, who was here last week? Okay, less people than are good. I don't know if I have your sisters in here, which is a bad thing. I do not have resistors, so that's not ideal, but, um, we all got two last week. Yeah, if you guys just want to, like, distribute one of them, I have more, and you guys can get some later then. Um, try not to lose these. Maybe we can order more, maybe not. Um, but if you have uh, light-dependent resistors or photoresistors, share them with your neighbors. Um, because I didn't, I didn't bring the rest of them today. Um, and try out this code, modify it, see if you can get it to work. If you're having trouble, let me know, I'll come and try and help you. But today is really about sort of convincing this to do what you want it to do. So, once you have like a dependent resistor and an LED, try to make a brake beam sensor. Do you guys know what those are? No? Okay, so brake beam sensor is a super easy to make kind of simple sensor. Um, and then just have it try, try to have your program respond with either like on or off. So brake beam sensor is a sensor where you have a light on one side. You guys have made these in long time. But do you, do it, have you guys done the full sock slot? Just did it. Just did it? So it's kind of like that. So you have like an LED on one side. And it's making some light. You don't have to have like the fancy asynchronous detection thing going on. And then you have your sort of like receiver. In this case, it's a motor um, resistor. Over here, and so if you like put your hand in between, then it'll be darker. If you don't have your hand, it'll be brighter. Yeah? Yes. So try making one of these. This will be really useful soon. Very soon. Like next week. This is something you should actually make. Because um, next week, what we'll be doing is we'll be trying to build a speed controller for a motor, which will be all sorts of fun. I'll probably have some template code for that. Um, it's a little trickier. Uh, yeah. So, share. Who has, who has problems right now? Okay. I'm going to start here. Your problems. Mm -hmm. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> So where is it? Where is it? That's okay. Can you program it? So, what you should do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.